Okay, so now that we have our walls in place, let's go ahead and add the ball that we're going to use to fire in the world and two little paddles on either side. So as an example of how you can reuse assets, which is an important thing to learn how to do when you're making games, uh, is reusing assets in different ways. Um, although this is obviously very simple, what we're going to do is use the same sprite that we use for our walls. I'm going to click and drag this in here. So this first little square is going to be our ball. So let's rename that to be the ball. we don't need a capital A in there and we're going to click and drag another one in over to the side here it doesn't need to be perfectly placed or anything yet but this is going to be uh, just called a paddle so we have these two different objects now obviously our ball can remain this size because we want it to stay as a simple little shape but our paddle we want to make that a little bit bigger so we're going to drag that up on the y-axis which is the green one here so I'm gonna drag that up to be uh, roughly that size I'm gonna make it a little bit wider as well and I'm gonna move this over so it's almost to the edges of the walls but not quite just a little bit in like this so that uh, we'll have some space after the paddle uh, it, when the ball can fly past the paddle basically and it can enter this area and then we'll know that we've missed the ball and we lose a point uh, one of the problems at the moment though is that everything is white so in the classic pong of course the walls and everything were all white and we had just the ball being white and the paddles being white but we can make things a little bit more interesting uh, as it's not uh, in mid 70s when we're making this game so what we can do is for example on our ball over here we're going to change the color of this just by clicking on color and we're going to make this uh, a nice white color so we're going to make the hue over here be uh, in the yellow range and we're going to click and drag this so that it makes a nice yellow ball and if we click off it now we can see we've got this yellow ball here we're going to grab our paddle and we're going to recolor this to be we'll make that one red like that and we can see i just move that so it's just nicely on this line kind of almost we're going to set the position of this to be at minus eight just to be a nice flat number and we're going to set the y position uh, to be at zero like that so now we have one paddle over here we also obviously need to have a second paddle over here on the right so we could just duplicate this um, and copy it over here but the problem is obviously we're going to apply various bits of control to this paddle so we want it to be able to be uh, moved around within the world um, if we were to duplicate this now and put it over here we'd have to whenever we make any changes to this one we'd have to manually go and make changes to the second paddle over here which would be obviously very time consuming and something we don't really want to do but what we can do instead is use things called prefabs in Un which are a very very handy thing to use within unity so if we go to our prefabs folder now we've called this the prefabs folder it doesn't actually matter what you call it um, it only matters that uh, what, what we're going to do now is drag this paddle into our prefabs folder here and it creates a copy of it and it, as I said it doesn't matter that it's called the prefabs folder that's just handily how we remember anything but what it does is creates a copy of the paddle and if we make any changes to um, this copy which basically becomes the master copy of the paddle if we make any changes to this it'll apply to any paddles that exist within the world. So now that we created this, what we can do is click and drag it back into the world. And I'm gonna pop this one down over here. And as an example of how this works, so say if I made a change to this original master pad, uh, paddle, what I could do is go to the color and say I could make it a nice color of blue. And you can see that instantly applies to these other two paddles that we have dropped into the world. And I'm just gonna undo that. Uh, if I go to this paddle here, I can make an individual change to this one. So I could make this paddle be blue or kind of purplish almost. Um, but you can see it doesn't apply to the other one and it doesn't apply to this one down here. But what I can do then is make sure I have this one selected. And if I go to apply up here like that, now it applies to all um, our paddle prefabs. So we can see if we click then on the paddle, 
down here, it gets applied to that, so it's reflected down here. And now we have all of our objects being this kind of purpley color, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but what we want to do to make sure that our, our paddles are kind of distinguished between them, um, uh, I want to make sure that this is staying looking red. So what we can do to make sure that we don't just have these two paddles looking the exact same, I'm going to make this paddle over here on the right, I'm going to make it a nice color blue. And I'm not going to apply any changes to that one. But now back on this first paddle, um, it, when we make any other changes to this, so say for example, um, well we won't say anything just yet, but we what will happen is if we make any changes to this, anything that we change and then apply to the prefab will be copied over to our other little prefab paddle. But because we've changed the color on this, and you can see it's been changed because it's changed to this kind of uh, bold um, color on the text here, uh, the changes that we've applied to this one will be only reflected within this object. But if we make any changes to this one and then apply them as a prefab, they'll they'll carry over to this object, other object, but they won't affect it. So say for example, I'm going to change this one to be uh, just for the moment. We'll make it green. I'm going to apply that change. Now our prefab is green, but our other object remains blue because specifically on this one within the world, we made that blue. So if I go back to our first paddle, I'm going to leave it at red for just because there's something uh, standard about gaming having red uh, versus blue. We can apply that again. One thing we want to add, much like we added to our walls, is add a box collider to it. So I'm going to add, go to add component here again, and we can see we typed in box previously, so that's still saved in our search box. So we can just easily click on box collider 2D, and now we can see our paddle here has that little green outline around it. And if we hit apply now, and we go over and look at the other paddle, we can see that that box collider has now been added to the other one, but still it hasn't lost its blue color. So those are the kind of basics of how prefabs work within Unity. They're very handy and very powerful and very, very useful uh, on, a, on a daily basis within Unity. So the final thing we want to do is go to our ball here. And we want to give our ball a box collider as well so that we can interact with it. So now we have our, our ball can uh, hit against other objects. So we can be able to hit against the walls and it'll be able to hit against the paddles on either side. But of course, at the moment, it's not doing anything. If we hit play in our game, all that happens is our, our five little objects here just kind of stay exactly where they are. So let's start adding some actual physics into the game. Konnichiwa.